dude, I am so pumped about this. I fucking love this album. I love the singles. I love the album. I love everything about it, man. If I'm excited about it, I can't imagine how excited you are about this album getting close to coming out, man. How pumped are you right now? I'm stoked, man. I had a lot of fun making it, writing it, recording it. We wrote a lot of it up here uh, on the big whole river and uh, everything is savage. I love it. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, Man, there's just when you listen to this record, man, just when I think I figured you out, you throw something else at me with this album, man. Um, the singles, the two singles, W you know, Savage, you, you think this is just a straight country rock album. There's so much more to it, man. You've got songs like right again. You got songs like death row ain't coming down day by day. Dude, this is like uh, a good, like gumbo chili combo of musical artistry with what you've done on this album, man. Um, how proud are you of just musically what you've been able to accomplish here? Um, I'm super stoked, man. Um, like I said, it was it was fun writing it, recording it. And my producer, you know, every time I was like, maybe we should get a session guitar player. He's like, no, dude, you play the guitar. So I got to play guitar on most every song. Um, and yeah, there's only one guitar feature. It's Chris Shiflett, uh played on Die Today. I just had him do the solo. Um, okay. Am I breaking out on you? Is that your Wi-Fi or my Wi-Fi? I'm not sure. I'm you're crystal clear on my end. I'm de you're definitely clear for me, so I'm not sure. Okay. So let me go over here. I'm a really good repeater, uh, right here. <laughs> this should get better at least. There we go. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man, there's just so much going on with this record musically. You've got some country rock. You've got some just straight rock. But, dude, then one ain't coming down, man. Like, you completely turn everything around, 180, turn everything on its head with that song, man. Ain't Coming Down is so much fun to listen to, man. Where did that song come from? That is all true stories about my first month owning this bar in Wise River. And one of my employees up here used to be my guitar player, and I've been friends with him for 10 years. And he, like, ate a gummy or took a dab hit one day and then called an ambulance. And I'm, and then I get called from another employer. They're like, hey, your boy's having a real bad time upstairs. And I'm like, you called an ambulance from my place to work. Now, granted, he lives upstairs in the old hotel. But he was like, someone said he's high and he ain't coming down. And I was like, no shit. And he called an ambulance and it took, it takes 90 minutes for paramedics to respond because we're so remote. So by the yeah. time the paramedics got here in some old ass truck, he yelled off the balcony, I'm not high anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was just like, right. So the first verse is Khaki Doo went crazy at the trailer court. That really happened. She packed her shit and headed north. She was out of here. Everyone went wild when the bear got poked. There was a bear that was messing with everybody in this valley. And one of the neighbors over there, the bear attacked his truck and he happened to have a bear tag. So we all got together as a community and ate the bear that was messing with everybody. <laughs> and then Kyle has a shoebox full of cash from all the tips he's making. And he went and bought brand new moccasins and he's in the bar saying, dude, and he's walking backwards like moonwalking. And so all of this is like real shit to a T and the characters F U Ray around that time. His name is Ray Schonsberg. Gets pulled over because they have a warrant for someone in a car like his. But he's a, a big union UPS driver, like kind of the unspoken mayor of Wise River. And they drew weapons on him. And he came in the bar and he's like, oh, man, not a big deal. Just, the, you know, miscommunication. I'm like, just another Saturday down in Wise River. And then the last part, my friend Joey sells candles. Uh, there's a guy named Little Joe that gets hammered drunk up here and used to work for Evil Knievel, uh, and he's just a wild man. And then Hooker is this character that comes around every single night, and he hits the three bars up here. So Hooker's feeling fly from the H bar J, and judging by his sway, he's been there all day, all day, all day. What did you say? And then you go back to Kyle. I'm hot. I ain't coming down. So it's like literally every character is a real person in that song. That's awesome. Oh, my God. Dude, and putting it like a – Putting like a Beastie Boys spin on yeah. a very rural, rural location, I thought was really funny. Yes, yes. I, I've got family in Wyoming, so I know like 
there is nothing out there, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And some, but sometimes, Characters and bears. yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Characters. Some, I love that. Characters. I love that. <laughs> um, but it makes so much more time to get creative, you know, being in a right. town of what, 44 people. Um, certain songs on this record, I just picture you just sitting around a bonfire, sitting around in, you know, in the middle of nowhere with your guitar, just sitting around, just jamming, playing, singing what comes off the top of your head. And then, oh, like, yeah, right there. I, I just get all that vibe from a couple of these songs, man. Um, especially the lyrics. This You can tell yeah. this is a very honest, very personal record, man. How much of yourself really goes into these lyrics, especially, man, like Death Row. I mean, holy crap, dude. That chorus is everybody's felt that way at some point about somebody. Um, it's a personal record. You can tell. Yeah, I definitely opened up and I had uh, co-writers on that stuff. I remember the day by day song I opened with. I could be the one I never had or wind up dead like my old man. Yes. And my buddy's like, you sure you want to go down this road? And I'm like, yeah, because music and songwriting is therapeutic to me. And mm -hmm. I like to tell my story. I mean, even, you know, there's tinges I touch on of the child abuse stuff from Devil You Know to even get you some starting out in the beginning of poor white trash from a single wide survivor of the thought of suicide, light in the dark, voice in the crowd. Started out as a spark on a mushroom cloud. And I got a little braggadocious in those lyrics. I don't take my four kids to five star dinners, but I thought that was a clever lyric. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's like, you don't even take me to five-star dinners, you dick. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just opened up on a lot of that stuff. And even the shut me out lyric is interesting because you think that's about a relationship. But I, my producer sent me that track and he goes, do you have any ideas? And like an hour later, I fired back that lyric and they stayed the same. And he's like, oh, wow, bad relationship. I'm like, no, those were feelings of a 14-year-old boy that was unwanted. You know, mm. love me, hate me, break me, shut me out, push me, pull me, use me, tear me down. It was just, you know, growing up in a house with a abusive alcoholic stepfather, that was like, those were the emotions I felt. So I kind of turned a couple lyrics of your last kiss and stuff like that to make it sound like it's a relationship between, you know, two people. But it was actually a relationship between a kid and a stepfather. It was not huh. good to him. So, so that's how I wrote from that perspective. But I have a feeling the world will relate to a bad relationship there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so I, I loved, and it was a very freeing lyrical process because I've been playing the Nashville game for so long that at any time I'd write, people would be like, you can't say that, dude, it'll never get on the radio. You can't say this, you can't say that. And with this, I can say whatever I want, however I want to say it. So we did. And, uh, yeah, I feel like we got some good poetry in there. Well, and, and, and. At this point, nobody can say that you can't write that and get on the radio because, dude, like Octane has been spinning the crap out of these singles, man. Like, I mean, that's how I discovered you, which is crazy because, like, this is not your first rodeo. You are not new at all. Like, you've you've been around for a minute. You've been doing this. But so many people are discovering you for the first time right now because of octane and xm radio um talk right. a little bit about what that experience has been like like you louder than life sonic temple rock Oklahoma. you're on most of the dwp festivals this year octane like um i mean this is some of the biggest times that you've had as an artist right now i feel like um what has that been like your experience with this right now it's been wild, you know, and like you said, I've been around a while, so I've done big festivals and been on big stages, but it was always kind of spinning my wheels. It would just be random grabs and guests so like, oh, this guy that's country rock or rock country. So they'd sometimes just throw me on these stages and I'd go out with these bigger acts, but not with purpose, if that makes sense. There was no strategy yeah. or plan. And yeah. now that we have rock radio and Sirius XM Octane and all these people jumping on board now we're getting these tours with a clear path of yeah. this is how we break you know we went from stained feather san Antonio tour which was dope and everybody at the merch table will be like i discovered you on sirius i discovered yeah. you on pandora and hearing people sing back devil you know in florida when i 
ever, you know, played these festivals down in Florida. It was like a really cool experience because I've been up in Montana hiding out, opening this bar, writing songs. And as my song blows up across the country, so then going out and getting to see it firsthand, like you can tell my manager can call me and tell me about data and numbers all day. Unless you see it, you don't really feel it, you know? So yeah, yeah. going out and doing that and then getting all the Danny Wimmer festivals and now we get to go out with bush jerry cantrell and candlebox i think we're about to land another huge tour i got a huge tour in january and february we haven't announced yet and i'm like working with all my heroes you know and seeing those guys standing side stage looking over there and seeing aaron lewis like yeah dude (laughs) it's pretty cool so it's got to be even more validating like it this far into your career having 40,000 people, 20,000 people at one of these festivals singing back the songs that you wrote about such a deep, personal, emotional subject. Um, can you even put that into words, what that feels like and what that looks like to you? Because like when it's your music that you wrote, you breathed life into this stuff. This is your art. And it's connecting with like that size of an audience. Like, what is that like for you? Man, it's a wild feeling, you know, it's goosebumps. It's, you know, to see these things that start here and then all of a sudden it's coming out of strangers mouths is it's a very wild experience. So, yeah, yeah, it's um, just like I keep going back to the lyrics. I'm such a lyrically driven person. Like I was talking to uh, for Aaron from my epic yesterday, and there was this we talked about. There's this weird time where like everybody like the heavier it was, the better, and like you couldn't understand the lyrics to a lot of the songs that everybody loves so much. Like it made it so much harder to connect with the music. I feel like, but when it comes to what you're writing, what you're putting out, like. I connect with this stuff so much. And one of the lines I connect with so much is I forgot to die today. I mean, dude, that is so powerful. Where does a line like I forgot to die today come from? Cause that, that sums it up so well. Yeah. I had that title for two years and I tried to write it multiple, multiple, probably 10 times. And I just sit down and go, I forgot to die today. That's all I had. And I didn't know what the song was about. And so, like, my 11th time trying to write it, I was with a couple of buddies, my producer, and this guy, Eric Dillon, who uh, actually wrote Devil You Know With Me. And we're sitting there, and we couldn't figure it out either. And I'm like, wow, even some of the best writers I look up to can't figure out what this song is about, but they're very compelled by the title, right? So we knew it was something. And as I sat down to write it, a uh, soldier friend of mine texted me. Uh, he's a British SAS officer that did some heroic events in Nairobi, Africa, and saved a bunch of people in a hotel by himself. Um, went to war with a terrorist group alone. Pretty wild if you check out his story. Um, they call him Obi-Wan Nairobi, <laughs> and he's a special forces guy. But he texted me and said, good morning, hope you're well, Tim. And all I could hear was his British accent when I read his text. And I was like, oh, my God, what if I forgot to die today? It's like a dude running into a hotel that's under attack, not knowing how many bad guys are in there, but knowing that he needs to put his life aside to save a stranger or 70 strangers' lives. And I was like, that's the angle. That's the angle we need. I forgot to die today. Um, I came here to fight the rage. Shadows can fill my empty grave because I forgot to die today. And so I wrote it from that angle as a special forces operator running into something that you believe will probably clearly kill you. But at that moment, you're not thinking about your life. You're thinking about other people's lives and saving them. So in that, that little saying, you're just, I forgot to die. I guess I forgot to die. (laughs) You know, you became this hero. So I think that song can connect with anyone. And I even had a police officer friend in Nashville that, that stopped the shooting. Um, and became a big hero and he heard it and wanted to get the lyrics tattooed on his arm. Cause he's like, when I knew that school was under attack, I charged through the door and you saw his body cam footage. It was that horrible yeah. Nashville event. He's yes. and they charged into that school and uh, took out the bad guy. Um, so he heard it and got goosebumps and I've got buddies that are firefighters and first responders that are hearing it. Uh, highway patrolmen, you know, people that just have dangerous jobs. And we'll put their lives aside to save others. And and more often than not, they're saving people they don't even know. And they're putting their life aside for a brief moment to, you know, save people. So that's where the the angle came from. And 
Today I actually posted it uh, with some footage I had from Normandy, France, because today's the 80th anniversary of D-Day. And so I was like, perfect song. These guys, you know, unfortunately, a lot of those those GIs died. But for the ones that ran into gunfire to liberate Europe and stop evil, I'm like, this is for you. Wow. It really puts it really makes you I would assume it really makes you really think about what you do as an artist when you've got people like that, like somebody who who's who's saved hundreds of lives like putting your art on themselves like permanently like it really really kind of makes you think about like what you like what you're what you do you know like did you you ever think that that would ever be a thing when you sat down to write these songs like you're just sitting down writing what comes to your mind what comes out of your heart and then it's connecting with people on such a a deep level and so personal like that's really gotta that's gotta hit deep yeah yeah absolutely just having you know like i said songwriting is therapeutic for me and when it turns out being therapeutic for other people that's you know that's a win so yeah what is it like balancing a music career with with four kids i've got three kids i i i know i don't want i don't want more like what is it like balancing this life with with four kids, a wife, and just the family lifestyle. Cause I can tell, man, you're 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 a family man. I can tell. Like you're just down to earth. You're you're just a dude. You're just a you're you're a guy, you know, you're down to earth, humble. Like yeah. you can tell. How how hard is it balancing the family with what you do? Um, I bring them out as much as I can. You know, I've got ages three, eight, twelve, and uh 16 so hang on one sec real quick you got it okay i'm back sorry you're good man it's all good um yeah you were you're talking about how you try to take him out as much as you can it's, it's got to be hard to balance it though man um hang on one sec <laughs> sorry about that i had uh Good. i've got some, i've got some unhappy customers at my restaurant that won't eat pancakes for breakfast and they just yelled at me <laughs> man, food service is hard man i've done it, it it's it ain't easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i take the four kids out when i can my wife will fly them out my daughter is getting super interested at 16 because she plays music as well um nice so yes you'll travel out and she yeah i'm like oh you show up when the food fighters are playing huh what about dad shows (laughs) (laughs) so it's it's you know you kind of feel guilty for being i was gone for like 62 days so that eats at you you know especially with the little girl who you see getting bigger and bigger every day um so yeah so that can kind of eat at you but also i didn't have a dad i want to give him the life that i never had i grew up real poor you know, so I want to make sure they have the things. And unfortunately, my my thing is music and you have to travel for it. So hopefully, you know, someday they don't they're not mad at me for being gone for a lot of life events. And they see that I kind of laid it all on the line for them to have a better life. Um, but it it is challenging. I mean, it's, it sucks when yeah. you miss these big events with your kid, you know, and unfortunately, I can't. I've, I never missed a birth. I remind my wife of that all the time. The last birth I almost missed because I got stuck in a snowstorm in Aspen, but I drove through the night to get through the snowstorm to get to the airport to land in Nashville, through another snowstorm to be there when my daughter was born. So So I got through all four, and now we're kids. So I made all the births. I don't know about the birthdays, but... uh... (laughs) Right. Yes. Um, You're going out on the road, man. Um, This summer... You're coming here to Indy on August 4th, but you're you mentioned Bush, Can Jerry Cantrell, Candlebox, and Bush. Man, that is one hell of a tour package. But I, just even before you come on, but in all honesty, like I've seen all three of those bands. Like you're the one I'm the most excited to see on that tour. Like I want to see this. Oh stuff man, live. thank you. Yes. Like I love new yeah. music, new band. Like I love finding new stuff. And like when I get to see something live, I've never seen before, man. How excited are you for that tour? I am super excited. Uh, big fan of Bush, big fan of Jerry Cantrell's like one of my ultimate heroes I've never met. So I'm going to have a hard time not abducting him and taking him fishing. <laughs> um, 
And then Candlebox, I was just in LA and I actually bumped into Bush's manager at the Sunset Marquee. Uh, Peter Katz just got to say hi to him and thank you. And then next thing I know, my buddy brings Kevin from Candlebox over. Oh. And I took Kevin to the basement studio, Nightbird Studio at Sunset Marquee, and I played him some of the record. And he lost his shit over Right Again and nice. Lovely and made nice. me play them back over and over <laughs> as he's screaming, these are hits, these are hits. Oh and then, of gosh. course, he's like, I need, he goes, I need the stem files. I'm going to reproduce this song. I'm like, okay, Kevin, I love you, but the ship's kind of sailed on that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but seeing, you know, like having that, I just met that guy for 20 minutes and I've listened to his music my whole life and him flipping out over that, like screaming in the studio wow. was pretty cool. So that's amazing. Man, when, when you put all that in perspective, you know, like your heroes falling in love and freaking out over your music like people that save people's lives tattooing your lyrics on their arms man the, the album is not even out yet and people are it's as re well received as it is what does this album mean to you knowing all of this is already happening with it and it's so much of yourself into this music man what does this record savage mean to you it's kind of freedom creative freedom really um I kind of felt like an alien in Nashville for the last 17 years. You know, everyone's like, oh, you're going from country to rock. I'm like, well, let me clarify. Country never let me in. I was always the alien. My hair is too long. My beard's too long. I cuss too much. My amps are too loud. My songs are too real <laughs> because I write lyrics about what I think, feel, or see. And it never fit there. So this was like when I got this go ahead to make this record, I was like, so you're telling me I can write the exact the songs I want, the exact way I want to write them as loud and obnoxious and overbearing as I want. So it's kind of creative freedom for me, kind of having the handcuffs off. Um, so I wish I would have done this sooner, but I also don't know that I was equipped to do this sooner. Um, so, yeah, it's freedom, man. Savage is freedom. I heard Chris Daughtry say, say the same thing recently because he recently left pop and went back into rock he said the same thing man i wish i had done this sooner it's so much more accepting in in rock and roll and a lot more open minds and you're just allowed to do so much more and you just feel so much more like yourself like you you feel home and that's one thing i love about rock and roll is the fan base is so welcoming just like it's so, it's a family no matter where you go, you see somebody in a band shirt that you know, or you hear somebody play in a band that you love, instant friends for life. Like it's such an accepting, just it's a community. And that's what I love about rock. And I'm so glad to have you in the rock community, in the rock world right now. Um, just so happy to have you in the rock world right now, man, because you are, you're home. This is where you belong. Yeah. Rock is so much more accepting. Um, and, you know, just even go to the the catering line at one of these festivals. Like, people stop and talk to you and ask you who you are, where you're from, what kind of me. Like, oh, they're just so nice. And it's mm -hmm. funny because they're such – some of these rock guys are so intimidating looking, but yeah. they're not, right? They're yes. not real life. I've yet meet a dickhead in the rock and roll space. Yes. And I've met – many in the country space arrogant guys and my wife had a great phrase uh isn't it funny how a lot of the country star guys are claiming to be good old boys but they're good old douchebags and most of these <laughs> rock stars you've met are actual good old boys <laughs> i've That's heard more perfect. about me, agriculture backstage at metal festivals than i have in <laughs> country music i mean even uh mud veins lead singers like yeah grew up on a farm and He's then from Bush's the guitar player. yeah and uh then Bush's guitar players already reached out and said, Hey man, what's up on social media? And he's like a rancher in California that rides horses. And I'm like, it's just, I think they're just real and they're not yes. competing for a space this big. Like they are in country Because in country. You yeah. have to have lyrics about thing and this about a certain thing. And you know, there's just more, they're not competing for the same airspace. So you can have, you know, Stain doing their thing and all these other bands doing their thing. So, yeah. So it's, 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 it's really, freedom like i said there's like creative freedom to a different level and i love it so yeah man you're home dude thank you so much for this music like this is as soon as i have a download of this it's going straight on my phone because i've listened to it three times today i had to slow down on the on the oh, road on the you, interstate. dude i had to slow down on the interstate i was i can't remember i think it was die today or 
and coming down, I realized I was going 85 on the interstate on my way to work. So I had to slow down a little bit and turn the music down. So I've been bumping this album all day long, man. It is so good. You killed it, man. This is Thank you. it's an album of hits, man. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here in Indianapolis in a couple months, dude. Stay safe on the road. Enjoy your time at home while you can. And um, we'll see you in a couple months, man. Thank you so much for everything you do.